T Trades invited me here today to talk about the broadening formation. And specifically, he said he had a lot of questions the other day about like, why does it work and what is it? So the broadening formation, although a lot of other strategies do talk about it, like if you Google it, you'll see a few, few different strategies and people talking about the broadening formation. With the strat, we have a unique way of looking at it. So if we go and just take, take one chart, make this simpler here. I know a lot of you guys were watching the one, I don't know, it's on ES yesterday, so this big old try. So the main question from what I heard was, why does it work? Why did the lines do that? And I think there's some little laggy for the future, so I apologize. But the reason the lines work is because over time, ranges broaden. They get bigger. And all a broadening formation is, is a broadening range, where the range starts smaller and gets much bigger. So since we know over time ranges will get bigger a lot of people use horizontal lines but those do not account for the time aspect of price because over time it will broaden so what you can do is when you're drawing them out the lines will act as support and resistance and what we call it with the strat is true support and resistance because you account for that time aspect and when you're looking at this what you'll notice is Price will take one side of the range or your liquidity, fail, and then take the other side. So the same idea that you guys use with external liquidity and internal liquidity, it's a, it's a very similar concept. But all the lines do is account for that time aspect that horizontal lines do not. So the reason it works is because price goes through price discovery. And what that means is over time, all they're trying to do is price things correctly, right? So you have different views on the algorithms towards us uh, as far as ICT and Strat go. But over time, what the algorithm's trying to do is price things correctly. So we call these broadening formations price discovery broadening formations because what happens is when you go from one side of the range to the other, what you're going to do is you're going to stop a ton of people out, which takes liquidity from these sellers and causes price action to speed up when you go back through a previous range. And the other thing that happens is you create crowded trades. So when it makes the new highs to all these previous highs here, anyone that's long, they've had all the time in the world to get long. You're making higher lows and higher highs, right? So once we go into the new highs, what we say is that's exhaustion risk, or we don't know if the buyers are going to continue to buy because when you go from, let's say here to here, so from like five, what, from five, two, four, eight into five, two, seven, zero, the buyers are buying, right? People are getting long, but once you make those new highs, you've stopped out anyone that was short. So if you are short, you have nothing to be short against. And at that point, you can potentially have a crowded long position or crowded long trade. And that's why when things reverse and fail back through previous range, now that crowded long position, everyone gets stopped out and you take out all these previous lows. And then once it's done that, now it's a crowded short position. And then you go all the way back through. And then once you do that again, now you can see up here, everyone's long into the new highs. Anyone that was short, they're stopped out. They have nothing to be short against. So when it fails, the first guys to take their profit on their longs trigger all of that to happen back through the previous range and stop everyone out. So when we're trading as stratters, what we're looking for is give me the broadening formation and give me the big ones because the bigger the broadening formation is, the more likely it actually is to fail and go back through that previous range. So in this case, you'll see it gets very, very small. And then this morning for CPI, super big. And if we go to the one minute, which I know a lot of you guys are watching this stuff, notice when news events happen, this is where Rob, the guy who invented the strat or at least coined everything we do as stratters. This is where he noticed it happening and where he kind of came up with this reasoning behind it. So when the news comes out, everyone's sitting there and they have their hand or their finger above their button. So they're either going to buy or sell, right? So right when the news comes out, or you can see right before it, everyone's like, buy. They, click, they all click their button. So it flies up into the highs. You stop anyone out and then everyone's long. So what happens? The first guy to take some profit up here sends it back through and since everyone's long it's an order vacuum because there's no willing buyers in here they're already they've already bought so now once you come below where that initial news spike or news was released 
once you're below that, now anyone who is waiting there to do their positioning, now they say, wow, good news. Now it's bad. So everyone sells in the other direction. And this sometimes will happen more than once. might happen four times. It could happen, it could happen over and over and over. But that concept of everyone getting along and then everyone has to get out or vice versa is what we're trading. So for example, Another inches. another way to look at that str yeah. or uh, <clears throat> ICT wise is that's generally your power of three. So that's like your yeah. accumulation, manipulation, distribution. So it's, there's similarities Absolutely. between it. It's just uh, different viewpoints and ways to look at it. Yeah. And then the other way is we can scan for it and identify the broadening formation because what a broadening formation is, is it's a bar that's outside of the previous bar. So if you look at, this is a cruise line stock here, you can see it goes up making new highs to the previous bar and then fails by going red right here when that happens that's a potential broadening formation because when you fail one side of the range and now this bar is red your power of three tells you what it's like well green to red that's your manipulation right there now it's going the other way so what we look for is you can see the broadening formation forms here makes the new lows makes the new highs so you can actually just find that right there from the candlestick like so. So this is now your broadening formation. So when this fails, now we know where it's going. It's going down there, as long as that stays red. So what we're looking for, for the big, big moves is give me the higher time frames. And the higher time frames, they'll tell you where the potential threes are or where those broadening formations are. And all the three is, is when you make the new highs and the new lows. And since it happens on a candlestick chart, this is one of the three types of candles you can have. We know this occurs for sure. It's one of the three things price can do. So for example, this is something we called out in SPY here in 2022. Notice we take the previous year's highs and then flip red. The second that happens, what's it trying to do? It's trying to take out both sides of this previous bar's range here by going three, going new highs and new lows, the previous range. And then once you've done that, this is now your broadening formation. So you can see they come back the next year. Now they're coming back through that. So where is it trying to go? The other side of that range again. And now this year, everyone's talking about the market potentially crashing, right? If you're going to do that, the way we would draw it out or the way we identify it is like this. Where if we draw from right to left, what you can see is we've made new highs to all of this stuff, to these highs. And new lows here to all of these lows back here. So if we're going to reverse, what we need to see is we got to take out some previous month lows and stay down because once we're failing back below these highs, then we can start thinking about taking out all of these guys, failing one side of the range and going outside. And if we go to the year, what would that look like? Well, you'd have to be trading below 472.16 for the potential failed trend to the upside, turning into a three or broadening formation to the downside. And, and that just, means below this, that's what we want to know about. And just to add on to that, so if you guys understand the open high low close of the candle, that's how ICT identifies this, right? So what he's talking about is this yearly candle going up from the open, making a high. And then if it gets back below the yearly open, that is when you can have your wick formed or the manipulation of the yearly candle potentially to then get your distribution lower, if that makes sense. Exactly. It's very, it's a very similar concept. The only difference is instead of just looking for it on the lower time frames, we're also getting after the really high time frames for the super big moves. Sound is quickly muted, muted after two to three words. Are you talking about? Looks like someone's having some sound issues. Yeah, I'm on the recording. It's fine. So if you miss it, yeah, uh, you'll get it on. We'll get a recording. Yeah, but um, is there any questions in general? Uh, no, if you guys have any questions in general chat or stage, feel free to answer or ask them. Um, yeah, it's going to be kind of a quick live stream, but if you guys do like this, we can always get him on a tea talk. So. Yeah, I guess the thing that we can end with is how do you identify them? Because it's pretty simple. So what you want to do is you want to let them form and then look to trade back through them. So identifying them is as simple as either identifying the higher time frame three which we've shown you already or just making sure you're drawing right to left so if we're just go all the way back 
we can identify broad informations. So there's gonna be bigger ones and smaller ones depending on what time frame you're looking at because you're gonna see them everywhere. And what we mean by that is they happen all the time. You're always constantly failing one side and taking the other. So it's more of a phenomenon that occurs than it is a pattern, but we can identify them by drawing right to left. So if we're just looking at our highs and lows, you can draw from this high backwards, they've taken that out. And then right to left from this low, they've taken that out. So this gives you, you can see on a higher time frame, this, all of these candlesticks are outside of these three bars here. And then when it starts coming back through, all of these candlesticks become outside of all of this stuff to the left. And then they do that again. They're too weak to make the new highs with the gap up that we saw everyone really got killed on uh, Thursday of last week. But then you can see you take out all of these previous highs to the left, failing back through previous range. So where's this trying to go? Back into all of these lows. And one way we were able to identify that, you won't see it on the SPY. And we're constantly looking at all the different indexes, but we saw this. You see Dow Jones. Notice how there's a three. And what we like to say is if you did it one time creating the broad information, you might do that again. So when this gap up occurs and then comes back into that three, now we're looking for the other side. So three and then three, big old broad information. And that also happened on IWM. You'll see the three here and then the three again. So in the Russell. Does that make sense? Um, maybe you could add on like time frame continuity. So like if you're going with the trend and then you have your broad yeah, information. Sure. Um, so what he's going to talk about here is very similar to if you've seen my like ICT Suns model higher time frame, right? So when you get a sweep of a low in an uptrend, you're basically forming a lower time frame broadening formation. Um, if you kind of want to yeah. talk about like a TTO. Yeah, so time frame continuity is something we look for, and it's how we gauge who the more aggressive participation group is. Because at any point in time, you're either going to have more aggressive buyers or more aggressive sellers. So that's why before we had all four time frames up here, and I'll show you that here. Like so. So we're going to use the 60 minute as our intraday. Then we're going to use the day. We're going to use the week and we're going to use the month. And the reason we do this is because when all of these four time frames are the same color, such as right now, the day is red, the 60 is red, the week is red, and the month is red. What that tells us is for sure the seller is the more aggressive participant. It does not mean that it has to go lower because that can change every 60 minutes. They're either going to confirm that the sellers are more aggressive or they'll attempt to change it. But as far as broadening formations, are concerned, what we're looking for is, can you get this full time from continuity where everything is red back through a previous broadening formation? So something like, if you go to Starbucks, this is something we identified last week and we're gonna have to zoom out a little bit further. If you go to the year on here. So we're always using from the yearly down to the 60, all the time frames. You'll see this. So notice this is your three right here. And one way we like to identify that is they sold down and they bought up. So they might do that again. So you see they buy up again outside of the three. Now they're selling back down. So what we identify is since we're back into this broadening formation of the outside bar or the three, we would like to see that taken out. We will have extra targets. We'll have one here as well. But as long as this is a bar that's trending lower, taking the previous candles lows, we're looking to come back through all that stuff. So what we wanna see is, if we go up here, we switch to the month. Like at the beginning of the month, notice how the month goes red here. The week is also red at that point. The day is red at that point. And then anytime the 60 is red, well, that's also all red across everything else. They are selling right then and there because the more aggressive participant is definitely the sellers. So as long as that stays the case, and we just keep going down on the day, that's where we're going. We're looking for the other side of that broadening formation. And since it's so big, that's where the really big moves are gonna happen. The other thing we look for is something that we call actionable signals. So you'll have um, a lot of them. I'm not gonna go through them all here, but the inside bar is one of those where 
this is an equilibrium. And what that tells you is the sellers are not aggressive enough to take the lows. The buyers are not aggressive enough to take the highs. So they agree on prices here. When that breaks, what that tells us is an aggressive seller entered the market here at 90.06. And as long as that continuity all stays down, that's happening this quarter. You can see this is a quarterly chart. For three months, they could just keep puking it. Doesn't always happen like that, but when you get the right stuff, for sure. And um, that is one way we can do it. If we go to something like, um, let, let me see. You can butt in here if you'd like. I think uh, one other thing you could talk about is explaining 2-2 reversal. And then I think anyone who's seen my daily bias video, you'll be able to relate that pretty easily. And maybe you'll see where I kind of got a lot of it. So yeah, for example, a 2-2 reversal, we'll go to like a really good one. Let's see, Marvel. So a two is a trending bar and all that's going to be is where you can see this would be a two up here where you have a higher low and a higher high to the previous bars highs, which means this is a higher low, higher high buyers are in control. It's trending upwards. A two, two reversal is when you have a two in one direction countered by a two in the other direction, which tells you anyone that bought in here below that, those guys have to get out. So this is one of the setups we look for and we, you can look for it everywhere. It happens on every time frame. It's so like, for example, this is a daily chart, two up, two down. It's also a kicking pattern, which is something I'm not going to get into, but I have some videos on that. Do you want to also, or I was going to say, do you want to find a one that's like a hammer or shooter and just the, the closure of it lines up with my daily bias video? You know what I mean? Um, let me see. Do you have any example off the top of your head? Let me I have uh, one. Uh, just go to MQ daily. And just go uh, to when, when, when the lows are taken and we form a 2-2 two -two on the left side. Down here? Uh, it'll be a little bit more to the left. The, yeah, you see it. Way down here? Yeah. Yeah, so this you'll see. First of all, you have a 3, so this is your broadening formation. It goes 2 down, so it gets bigger. Because these two bars, you can see if we're drawing it out, your broadening formation looks like this. So when you have this two down that fails and changes to a green two down, what that's trying to do is become a three, right? But when it runs out of time, what you get instead of a three is a two, two reversal like this, where you can see a two down and it's a hammer candle is something we'd identify. And then above that, now you're reversing because before, although it was green, it was not trending up. It was a lower high and a lower low. Here, that's when that trend changes. And anyone that's short into this new low, they have to get out above all that. And if we were looking at a two-day chart, this would be a three of these two bars here, which are a three of these two bars here. So what we call this when this works out is a compound three. These two bars are outside of all of the stuff to the left. And so if you understand that, now you'll kind of see if you compare it with my daily bias video, I'll, there's a lot of times where I say in my video, I would target previous day high. And in this case, previous day is kind of, previous day high is actually kind of a trigger to be long. Um, and that's because it's going through the previous range to previous week's highs to form the outside bar. Um, Very pretty. Yeah. It's just kind of the example I had on my head, but I get a lot of questions on why if previous day high was taken, would you still expect it to go higher? And it's kind of this understanding. Yeah. And um, I guess I could also show you some two twos from today. So yeah, this is something we mentioned this morning. You can see we have their big list on here from Twitter. The two two on NXPI. So you can see this. You have the threes, broadening formation, broadening formation. Then they take out one side of the range. Two two right here. What does that do? It's like, well, the week was green at that point, but now it's red. So those weekly guys get negated they have to get out because they're buying the first two days of the week now they have to get out the quarter is also red if you go to the month the month is also red so anytime this 60 is a two down they're selling that off and you're back into this three so where are we looking for 237 238 and we can also identify the try like this for drawing right to left And uh, if any of you guys are interested in options trading, I would check out Alex's YouTube channel because that is 
what he specializes in. Yep. And uh, also thank you because he is the reason that I'm into uh, ICT. <laughs> so. But um, I think that's all I'm going to have for you guys today. So if you have any questions or anything, you can go and check me out on Twitter. And if you tag me, I'm willing to go and answer any of those that you guys got. And it's right here, just Alex's options. And like you said, if you're interested in any of this type of stuff or stock trading, options trading, you can check out my YouTube channel, which um, is just going to be Alex's options as well. But I got to get going. I have a video to record and I got to get back to my stream during the day. So unless you guys have any questions, that will be about all we got. Sweet. There was one question. There's one question here. So where do you get the numbers on the candles for trading view? I know a lot of you guys are on that. What you can type in is just strat numbers. So simple strat numbers by trader creator. Those it's gonna be the simplest one that you can get. Um, for thinkorswim, what you're gonna want to look at is if you type in strat sweet think script, you'll see this. So you'll be able to get pretty much anything that you want as far as strats concerned. Wait. There is a recording. There will yeah. be a recording. <clears throat> I'll uh, we'll get it uploaded. Um, and I'll put it in the, uh, re recording live streams channel. And the last question I see is mainly the higher time frames. We want to use the higher ones because they last so long. So a two, two day lasts a day after that you have to become a two down again, if it's going to keep doing that. But when you look at something like, if we get a Lululemon, this is something from the macro vid and macro just means the higher time frame. When you get a three, two expansion of the range. That this on the monthly lasts until the end of the month. So we can take that here and say, as long as it's below 385, that's a short for sure. And the other thing we can notice is if you want to leave it on that time frame for a second, I'll just relate it to my, uh, yeah, go my for video. It. So if you realize the little inside or the little small green doji candle, um, you can see we failed the high on that and then we go and close lower. So in my daily bias video, we close below the previous bar, then expecting a continuation, right? And so it's kind of now you guys can kind of see where I got a lot of those concepts. Yeah, and the I guess the last thing we can close out on is this stuff is it's just a definitive thing about price because it's always going to fail one side, take the other. It cannot trade outside of the direction of continuity. And what we like to say is the most twos and twos going three. So if you have a two down month, a two down week, a two down day, and a 60, it's def it's definitively going down. You can't say otherwise. What you could say is that it may reverse, which is that's that can be true. It might reverse. But what you can't say is that it's going up right now. So the other thing is the broadening formation. Since we know the three happens, that's definitively true as well. And as far as actionable signals and stuff, we know for a fact that those are also something we look for. The main one we look for is very similar to your guys's accumulation, manipulation, distribution model, but we just identify one, two, it. Two. Yeah, we identify it as an inside bar that gets countered. So it might break higher and then fail. That's something we look and, for. And all that is, is you have consolidation and then your directional two bar, right? So when it breaks higher, that's your fake breakout or your for manipulation. Example. And then yeah. it goes the other way. So you can probably explain that. But Yeah. So for example, on SPY, inside bar. So this is an equilibrium. They agree on prices. It breaks up. So there's a buyer in there. When it goes red, those guys are getting countered. And this is the same idea as your accumulation. And then they manipulate the highs and then fail. But we're identifying right there. And that's red. Now it's a potential three. And the magnitude would be to take out the low of this candle and potentially the low of this one, which you can see they missed it by yeah. a couple pennies yesterday. If you uh, if you go to my Twitter, I actually have that exact example marked out. We have or like ICT wise and strat wise, but yeah, <clears throat> but uh, that's all I got for you guys today. So I got to yeah. get going. Uh, well, thanks for coming on. Um, I'll get this recording up for everyone else who missed it or if you want to rewatch it. If you do have questions, um, check out Alex's Twitter and his YouTube. Do you want to throw those in the stage? Um, just links to those. Uh, yep.